So this video is going to give you a quick run through of how to conduct a univariate ANOVA or one way between subjects ANOVA. The example we're using today is based upon some research that was conducted here in the department in the University of Liverpool and the paper it's based on is available to you. And basically what this is all about is there was, um, people were interested in whether if you expose people to pictures of different body weights it changes judgments about the acceptability of body weight. So basically what happened in this experiment, individuals were exposed to lots of pictures of either very obese people, overweight people or underweight people. Following this repeated exposure to these different groups of people, participants were shown a picture of one individual who was overweight and they were asked the extent they agree or disagree with this statement that this individual has an unacceptable weight on a 1 to 7 scale with one being completely disagree so those people would believe that person's weight is not unacceptable and seven completely agree which would be they believe that person to have an unacceptable weight so this is the data collected and as you can see we've got condition here labeled from one to three so if we look at the values how we're labeled number one is obese so this is the group of individuals exposed to lots of pictures of obese people two is overweight this group was exposed to lots of pictures of overweight people and three underweight this group was exposed to lots of pictures of underweight people as you can see we've got our other one is target acceptable the label in this being this person is an unacceptable weight from strongly disagree to strongly agree so what we're interested in is whether these three groups differ in any way on the scoring of target acceptable weight. Of course we can't do a series of t-tests on this because this would lead to increased chances of a type 1 error or a false positive. So instead what we need to do is run a univariate ANOVA, see if these groups differ in any way and if they do we do appropriate post hoc tests to find out which specific groups differ. So to run the univariate ANOVA is relatively straightforward, we get to analyse and we get to compare means and one way ANOVA. So we see our variables appear here. It's a relatively straightforward process. Our factor is our independent variable, so that's condition. And this person is unacceptable weight, the target acceptability weight variable is our dependent variable. And we need to ask for a few things. Um, before we run this, so firstly, we need to go to options, and what we want to ask for is descriptive statistics. We can see the means and standard deviations and so on of our variables, and homogeneity of variance test as well. This will tell us if we meet the assumption of homogeneity of variance for this data set. We click continue. We also need some post hoc tests. If there is a significant effect of the experimental condition as shown in the ANOVA, we need to follow this up in some way. There's lots of different postdoc tests we could choose from. Generally speaking, this year, what we're looking at is these two here. The least significant difference test, LSD test, or the Bonferroni. Basically, all the, the difference between these two is the LSD test is just a simple comparison. Do they differ at all? The Bonferroni test will correct for the number of comparisons made. So what SPSS does is multiply the calculated p-value by the number of comparisons made. So in this example, if you were to do a Bonferroni correction, it would multiply the p-values by three because you have three possible comparisons, group one compared to group two, group one compared to group three, and group two compared to group three. However, in this example, it's gonna do it the simplest way possible we're going to ask for a least significant difference test. So this is just a basic comparison. Do the groups differ in any way? We'll keep our significance level as the standard 0 0.05. Okay, that's all we really need to look at for now. And then we click OK. And here's our output. So we can see we've got a table of descriptive statistics. 
So we can see the numbers in each condition, they're not even, but that doesn't really matter because there's still a lot of participants in each condition. We've got our means and standard deviations here, which we could report to descriptive statistics. Bearing in mind, to be APA style, you'd be reporting that to two decimal places, not three. So the first thing that we need to look at is test for homogeneity of variances. Do we meet the assumption of homogeneity of variance? As you can see, the Levine's test given here is non-significant. So this means that we do have homogeneity of variance. Remember, for these sorts of tests, these tests of Anover assumptions, we generally want them to be non-significant. So this is a good thing. This essentially means that the values in our next table can be trusted. We know that the statistics produced are in line with the assumptions of the test. So next thing, we just need to look at our ANOVA table. This ANOVA table will tell us whether there is a significant difference between conditions in any way. It doesn't tell us which specific conditions differ. It doesn't tell us group one differs from group three, or group one differs from group two. However, what it does tell us is whether there is some difference within this data set. And this essentially gives us the statistical justification to look further. So, as you can see from this, we do indeed have a significant effect of our condition on our dependent variable. And we'd simply write this up. Now, because this is statistically significant, we can therefore look at our post hoc tests. And this is going to tell us which groups are significantly different from each other. Essentially, it will tell us what's driving this effect within this table. So if you look at this post hoc test table, you can see it's labeled here as LSD, least significant difference test. And this gives us our three comparisons. It shows the comparison between the obese condition and the overweight condition, obese condition and underweight condition, and overweight condition and underweight condition. So we've only got three comparisons, but you'll notice that six comparisons are actually appearing in this table. That's simply because it does everything twice. So you can see there's an obese versus overweight comparison and there's also an overweight versus obese comparison and it gives us exactly the same p-value. So we only need to look at half of the statistics in this table. So what is it this table is telling us? Well, you can see that there is no significant difference between those exposed to obese individuals and those exposed to overweight individuals. However, there is a significant difference to the participants exposed to the obese individuals compared to the underweight individuals. And that's statistically significant there. The final comparison, which we haven't looked at yet, is the overweight compared to the underweight condition. And you can see that's not statistically significant either. So what we can see here is the effect that we found in the ANOVA is driven by a significant difference between those exposed to the obese individuals compared to those exposed to the underweight individuals. And you'd write this section up accordingly. So what would happen if we didn't have homogeneity variance? Well, I've made a slightly edited version of this data set now. So let's rerun our analyses, although in exactly the same way as we were going to do it before, so independent variables condition, this person was an acceptable weight as our dependent variable. That's for our options. And we ask for descriptors and homogeneity variance test again. Click continue. And we do our post hoc in the same way as before. So we click OK. And this is our output. And now when we look through to so our test of homogeneity variance, we can see that now we have a statistically significant Levine statistic. So what this means is we don't meet the assumption of homogeneity variance for an ANOVA. So this is a bit problematic because this means we can't be certain that our subsequent ANOVA test statistic table can actually be trusted because it could be this problem of homogeneity variance which is driving the effect. So we need to think about a solution to this problem. And SPSS provides us some very simple solutions for dealing with this. So if we get to this point, we see this is significant. We can stop and we can pretty much ignore these tables for now. Instead, what we can do is reanalyze in exactly the same way as before. So to only go to options, we can ask for Brown Foresight and Welch and click continue there. 
And when we ask for postdoc tests, instead of asking for this, we can ask for one of our equality of variance not assumed tests. There's a few variants of this, but generally we will look at Tam Haines T2. So we'll click that one instead. So this is one that's pretty obvious what it does. This is your post hoc test for when you don't meet the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Then we click continue and we click OK. So now what we have is, as before, descriptive statistics, homogeneity variance test. This doesn't change. That's just the nature of the data. But we now can ignore this table. We've got this new table now appeared, our robust tests of equality of means. And this is where we can get our test statistics from if we do not have homogeneity of variance in our data. As you can see, there are two different ones. There's the Welch test and the Brown Forsyth test. And they're both used in slightly different situations. Generally speaking, people generally will use the Welch test if they don't meet the assumption of homogeneity of variance. The Brown Forsyth test tends to be used if you have one very sort of extreme mean that's causing the lack of homogeneity variances. If you look at our descriptive statistics table, we can see we've got our three means here. There's not one particularly extreme. You know, if all these, if these two are near one and that one was near seven, then that would be an extreme mean in terms of this data set. But the means aren't particularly extreme. So what we do is we'd interpret our data using the Welch test. So We'd write this up and say, due to the fact we did not meet the assumptions of homogeneity variances, and we can actually report the p-value for Levine's test statistic here. We, we analyze data using Welch's test. So instead, we'd write up this line of the data instead. And you'd write this up in pretty much the same way you would write up the ANOVA test statistic, bearing in mind we always report things to two decimal places. As you can see, actually, lack of homogeneity of variance within this data set makes no real difference. Highly significant results are found with the Welch test or the Brown Forsyth measure as it is in the normal ANOVA table. So there's no real effect of lack of homogeneity of variance in this case anyway. However, it's still best practice to report the correct test statistic. So we write up our Welch test. So the next thing we can do is look at the postdoc test that we've used Tam Haynes T2. And as you can see in this example data set, there's a significant difference between obese and overweight conditions. There's also a significant difference between the obese and underweight condition. However, there is no significant difference between the overweight and underweight condition. And we'd write this up accordingly.